Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, and this is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bowles Brown is a working comic, which uh, is hard to say these days because there, well, I guess there are a lot of working comics, they're just none of them are making a living out of it, but you've made a living out of it, haven't yes, you, Yes, and uh, none of them usually are as old as I am, either. <laughs> Do you find that that getting old as a comic is a problem? It's uh, definitely harder to get work. So, wow, why? But I think that's always been the uh, people always complain about that. But I think show business has always been for younger. I think George Harrison talked about a. They mentioned a Beatles reunion years ago, and he said, "I don't think people want to see four old men hobbling around on a stage." <laughs> Maybe he's right. Well, maybe he, he may be right, but uh, but the whole philosophy is wrong. For instance, in comedy, are you a better comic right now than you were, say, ten years ago? I think I am. Yeah, you get, just get better and better the more you do it, and you know, um, without some kind of medical intervention happening that would make it impossible for you to do it, you would probably continue to get better as the years go on, and then maybe around. 75, 80, you would pretty much set everything you were doing in stone, but you were very good at what you do. So, that's what that's what Durst said. He said uh, comics are kind of like old blues musicians. Yeah. Good, good example. Good example. Uh, and then he got a stroke, but, you know, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can laugh at that. It's, it's meant to be funny. Um, but it, 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 it's just, um, you know, I mean, I, it always bothers me, the ageism in things like this. I mean, ageism in, in music. I mean, yes, yeah, some people do get worse. Have you heard, uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, I'm trying to remember his name now. God, he was on Colbert the other night, and I, I caught him on, on YouTube. James Taylor. He's terrible mm. now. Uh, not, really? Not that he was ever very good. You know? Yeah, it wasn't one of my, yeah. not my kind of music. But, but, I mean, I saw him, and he was just terrible. Just terrible. So I, it, well, the, I would think most singers, the uh, people's vo vo voice really changes with age, most people. And uh, I would think singers, that would be a real detriment. Well, it's how good you take care of your voice if you're a singer. You know, um, that's your instrument. And so you don't, you don't abuse your instrument. And in the case of Frank Sinatra, he drank, he smoked. He abused his instrument. And by the time he was 75, he was terrible. You know, uh, his prime was right around in his early 50s. His voice was great, he was great, and so on. But then he kept smoking and drinking and drinking and smoking, and the voice started going until finally, if you listen to his later recordings, oh, man. He's like hitting clams like crazy. He can't hit the note he wants to hit. You know, it's pretty terrible. Pretty terrible. But on the other hand, somebody who respected his instrument was Tony Bennett, who kept being able to sing until, I think, what is he now, 95, something like that? Wait a minute, hold on a second. Echo, how old is Tony? Echo? It won't, it won't start. Echo... Echo? Huh, just not working. Hmm. Oh, well. I was going to ask Echo how old uh, he is. But I think he's something like 95. But he, could, he, he even the thing he did with Lady Gaga, which is, it was his final performance, he could still get it out there. You know, he, you know, he wasn't vocalizing as much. He was saying it a lot. But he was good. And uh, so if you respect your instrument, I think you can keep singing forever, to be honest with you. And uh, actors can go on till uh, 
That's barely ageism in a film, but uh, Clint Eastwood, I think, is 91. Yeah, well, but you still, you have to, if you're, if you're doing it right, you have to play your age. You, For sure, yeah. You know who was the smartest actor of all time was Sean Connery. He always played roles that were older than he was. And he said, I can keep doing that forever. Really? Yeah. Wow. He said, it's when you're trying to play people that are younger than you are that it becomes difficult. So <laughs> Yeah, that never looks good. <laughs> if you look at him, he's always you know looking much older than he is. Plays parts that are older than he is. And, uh, well, he's dead now, of course. But can't play any more roles except maybe, you know, a corpse. Uh, but... Uh, he was, uh, you know, that was a, a good theory. So he made sure he did that. The trouble was, I never could figure this out in films. In the in the twenty, the thirties, forties, and fifties, an actor could be in his fifties, his sixties, his seventies, and always they had him play younger than he was. You know, the leading woman was like twenty eight. <laughs> And the guy you know is like 65. And you're going, <laughs> come on. It's an impossible matchup. But that's yeah, like the way uh, it was. The one Jimmy I always... Jimmy Stewart and Kim Novak would be a good... <laughs> Jimmy Stewart and Kim Novak in Vertigo, he had to be well into his... Maybe close to 60. And she was, still in, her, 60, yeah. she was still in her 20s, I think. You know. Uh, that that matchup would have never happened. Okay? Uh but the one I really love is in um, North by Northwest, Cary Grant, who by then was easily in his 60s, uh, was playing uh, this guy who had this mother who's a part of the movie. She's like, you know, always bailing him out of jail and doing stuff like that. And that was played by Jesse Royce Landis, played Cary Grant's mother. She was two years younger than he was. <laughs> really? Wow. Two years younger. I often wondered how she felt about that. You know, I'm thinking she felt she had a good day's work, you know, but I mean, what a, you know, what a thing. She was just that, that old. And, and who was the, uh, was it Eva Marie Saint? Was the, uh, it was the woman in that. Yeah, she had yeah, to be she, pretty young, you know, maybe in a, early 30s, maybe, you know. Well, Hitchcock loved the young blonde. So. He loved the young blonde so much so I think that he actually had a peephole in their dressing room. <laughs> he, he, they say he was a very weird little man. You know? I've heard stories, but I don't like, uh, it's not really fair when someone's dead to accuse people, I don't think. But maybe he was, I don't know. You know, but they they did. Um, what was what was the movie? Uh, Vertigo. He wanted. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the actress now. She wound up playing the sister in Psycho, and he loved her. He thought she was just the greatest actress, but she couldn't. Oh, do, uh, she, Janet Lee. No, not Janet Lee. No, a Vertigo. Oh, uh, we, Vera Miles. Vera Miles. Very good. Very good. Vera Miles was supposed to be the lead in Vertigo, but then really? she, then she got pregnant and she couldn't do the picture. Because you don't want a pregnant, you know, lead in that picture. But that was who he wanted, you know. So, uh, yeah, that was... That I think was, the one that said he might have had some problems was uh, the girl that did the birds. What was her name? Tippy Hedren. Um, Tippy Hedren. Yeah. Well, he, he, he liked her. He thought she was terrific. And I thought she was maybe the worst Hitchcock actress ever. You know, I mean, she did Marnie, which was just a ghastly picture. I've never seen it. I think, is that his last film? Because I heard that's no, awful. No, no. His last film was the one with Bruce Dern. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Um, but, uh, he, no, he did quite a few films after that. So, But he, you know, Tippi Hedren. I mean, she was just a terrible actress. Uh I'm trying to remember who who's her, who's her daughter. Her daughter's very successful in the film. Oh so. yeah, he uh, Melanie Griffith. Melanie Griffith. Yeah. So you know, I mean, uh, uh, I, th that kind of pairing was very strange. And I don't know if I'm being ageist by saying 
Cary Grant probably shouldn't have been playing opposite Kim Novak. But for some reason, or Jim, Jimmy Stewart, yeah, it should have worked. It, it did work. So what the hell? Who am I to complain? Yeah. Well, I think that's the history of Hollywood is older men with beautiful young women. So. Well, I mean, that was the thing, you know. I mean, then you had the Hollywood casting couch, you know. If if we went back to Holly, history of Hollywood and we looked at some of these guys who ran the studios, Harvey Weinstein is a sweet old man, okay? I think by, so, because the, the things they, with no, no social media or anything, the things they could have gotten away with was unbelievable. I think there's a story that Louis B. Mayer had sex with Shirley Temple when she was still like around 16. Ooh, yeah, good. yeah. I mean, the, it, it, back then it was it was horrible. We have the old story, you know. This is the supposedly is now considered true, but it's still not spoken as gospel. That Kirk Douglas raped Natalie Wood when she was fifteen. I think I heard something about. Is that true? The, supposedly, it was he was he had her up to his place. This is a whole Harvey, it's like it's out of the Harvey Weinstein playbook, okay? But Harvey didn't invent it. Remember this, folks. Harvey just <laughs> simply was taking advantage of what he believed was old Hollywood, all right? Uh, but he supposedly had her up for an audition or something like that. And in the process, he came on to her and he, he forced her to have sex. 15-year-old girl. Jesus. Do you think where's the where's the Me Too movement on that one? You know, yeah. yeah, he's dead now, but you know he shouldn't have died without being called to account for that. Well, they could always dig him up and beat him. Yeah, but you know it was considered your right as a producer, as a director, as a uh, co-star to take advantage of these women. You know, I mean, it's very sad. Very yeah, sad. I'm sure that was just an accepted way. If that's the way business was done. So I mean, if you think Harvey Weinstein is terrible, there was much worse. Yeah, he ain't the first. He ain't the first. Much worse. And I might say that when you talk about people being taken advantage of uh, in Hollywood, Hollywood was very gay. You know, a lot of gays in Hollywood, and uh, there were stories that guys told about how they were taken advantage of by producers because uh, they were they were a guy. Wow. Okay, and they had to put out, or they were straight and they had to put out. So this was this was the history of Hollywood, you know, and it it's just wrought with all of that. And we always used to talk. The term "casting couch" is a is a is a term that's in, embedded into the history of Hollywood. Sure, you know. Well, it probably in, it probably happened in other businesses too. We never heard about. So. It probably did. You know, certainly, uh, you women who in, were were able to get ahead in say business let's just say business in general, were always, there was always the word term going around about, well, she slept her way to the top. Okay? And that might not have been untrue, that that was the way you had to get an advancement, was to sleep with somebody. You know, and, and why you would do that and then get only half the wages that the men were getting, <laughs> I have no idea. But I mean that day yeah, it went on in all businesses, but the casting couch in Hollywood, I mean we just it's just we've called all these people to account, like Harvey Weinstein, and Harvey was just you know, I'm sure we could find directors and producers and studio heads who were doing that much more often than Harvey was able to get away with it. Yeah. So I mean, he was just living in old Hollywood is what he was doing, and the the new mentality was coming into play, and he got caught in the crossfire. I'm not saying, I'm not excusing his behavior. I think it was abominable. You know, I would never, ever treat a woman that way. Uh, but, and it's wrong, wrong, wrong. But to to a guy like Harvey Weinstein, it was the privilege 
of being a producer. And they, and he got the lessons being taught to him by old Hollywood. So, anyway. Well, I... He's away for a long time, as they say. You know, I always forget to ask you, do you go to movies at all? Uh, I haven't. You know that I haven't been to a movie in years. You know, I haven't, there hasn't been anything I really wanted to see. Yeah, you know, we used to go to the movies constantly. Um, if they stop making good movies, that's what I feel. Well, I, I, I would go to see movies in theaters that, I, you know, looked better in a theater than they would look at home. Right. Movies are made to be seen in a theater. I always thought. That. Yeah, yeah, and and especially I was a big fan of 3D. So we went to all the 3D films and saw them in the theaters. Although after a while they got so badly projected that I just used my 3D TV at home. But anyway, um, then came COVID, and of course we weren't going to go to a movie theater. You know. It was a death sentence if you went to a movie theater, and uh, so we avoided the movie theaters. And then the, the you know the shots came out, the vaccinations, and we were a little more bold. But we still didn't go back to theaters. We just didn't feel we wanted to go back to a theater. And really, the only thing I went to, the only time we've been to a theater was we tried it a couple of months ago, and went to see Avatar: The Way of Water. Three hour movie. Ooh. We walked out after two hours. Literally walked out after two hours. I said, well, wait, we'll go home. I'll, it'll be on Disney Plus in a week or two or whatever, and we'll go watch the rest of it there. It was, and it was, I thought, a boring picture at two hours. That's why we left. Didn't feel we were going to miss anything. Um, but that's the only time I've been to a movie theater, and it was so shabby and just they didn't take care of the place and it just looked like uh, death warmed over yeah well, yeah i think the theater days are gone so yeah are going yeah but three hour movie that's why uh who you know who made the shortest films were uh, woody allen and hitchcock well uh, yeah but there were shorter films you know in the history of film they used to have things called uh, uh, second features you know companion features every movie theater would have a double feature you had to so you had the main big picture all right ba -ba 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 -bum. and then the, the, you had the the companion feature they were an hour hour and one minute things like that and you can see them a lot on things like turner classic movies and so on and you know something nothing wrong with that no. Please, just you know, make your statement. Get me in and out in an hour and a half. But the thing is, they're charging so much for movies now, they feel they got to go three three hours to make people happy. I think Hitchcock said he wanted a movie to be where you could watch it without having to get up and go to the bathroom. Really? I, I, Hitchcock films, I'm trying to think if there's a really long Hitchcock film. You're right. He was very terse in yeah, his. And Woody, I think Woody Allen had some movies that were under 80 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, why not? But then again, in those days, you could do that. People were used to shorter films. Now, you got a shorter film, uh, people want their money back. You know, they want to go in there, and, and then on top of that, you're going to see something like The Avengers, right? And it's like three hours of nothing but explosions. I know, <laughs> You know, and sometimes you're sitting in the theater, and they they're older theaters, and they didn't uh, they didn't put enough soundproofing between you and the theater next to you, and they're running one with more explosions, and so you're hearing the explosions from the other theater while you're trying to watch oh I don't know a Woody Allen film. You know, it, it's um, well the old adage is a short show is a good show. Well, I mean, isn't it? You know, it, you tell your you tell your story, you do it in a very terse manner, and then you get it over with. You know, I mean, um, I I was very happy with the series that they did out of a game that I played called The Last of Us, uh, and it only went nine episodes, and they did the whole first game. There are two games. There's the first game, and then there's this part two game which is they came out about five years later. And that's the one they're going to make into the next 
couple of years of, of the series on HBO. But they did the first game all in one season. And I wondered how they were going to do that. And when I look back on it, it was terrific because they're doing exactly what we were talking about. They made it, they, they made it smaller, more compact, and people loved it. Yeah. You know, because everybody got in and got out and they got it in nine episodes and they're gone. You know, they'll come back next season with the second game. Um, but I, I just, I, I was so happy with the way they did that. And I wondered how they were going to do that. Whether they were going to, because they could have stretched it out into two seasons and then it might not have been as good a show. Being this tight was very good. Very good. I think you almost have, it would, I don't think people have attention spans anymore. I don't know how you hold anyone for two or three hours. God. Well, you and I don't have attention spans. Kids have pretty, they have they don't have great attention spans, but for some reason they can watch a long movie. I, I don't understand it. Because they don't have good attention spans. No, maybe they're playing video games or something. Well, no, the TikTok. TikTok is you TikTok, flip, yeah. flip to another thing and then to another video and then to another video. Yeah, let's watch a million three-second three videos, yeah. yeah. I don't Have you ever looked at TikTok? you ever tried TikTok? I, I've seen it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I can get addicted to it. I flip it, and there are the kitties playing. <laughs> I, I, I got friends that are totally addicted There's to it. There's a woman who's you doing a butt dance. Boom, another one. There's some guy, uh, I don't know, getting tooth implants. You know? <laughs> and then I'm, I'm watching television, and it's a, a, a subcommittee hearing on TikTok, and it's all these aged, uh, older men uh, uh, complaining that TikTok is a arm of the Communist Party, and that we're all being indoctrinated into the Republican Party, and that the data is being used about us. And I'm thinking, well, if they're using data on me, they're going to say he really likes looking at Bengal cats. You know, <laughs> he really likes looking at women's butts. I mean, no, TikTok is so benign. There is no propaganda on there. I've never come across any kind of propaganda on it. You know, there's some, well, nothing. Yeah, yeah, nothing. So they're going to ban it, I guess. They want to ban it, but you see, I mean, what we do is we have these older gentlemen who are in Congress. The thing that gets worse with age are congressmen and senators. Uh, because we were talking about people not getting worse with age, and they definitely do. Uh, yeah, but they Diane, don't. Diane. They don't understand technology. They really have no grasp of it. And then they hold another committee on the dangers of artificial intelligence. Well, you know, it, it, artificial intelligence is going to happen whether you like it or not, and it's already been here for the last I don't know ten years at least. Al Spielberg had a movie in 2001 it's called, called AI. AI. called AI, yeah. But, I mean, we've had artificial intelligence before, and it's just that it's gotten a little better, you know. Oh, you can make a person who looks just like Brad Pitt. Yeah, but it would probably be a better actor, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, what's the harm there? I mean, but the, all these congressmen, they get so upset about technology. They just go crazy. And I never could quite figure out why, you know. I mean, they just don't understand any of that. So, uh, well, I want my TikTok. I want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, I, I like watching the kitties. And, and, and what it does, I mean, it does have what they call algorithms. And I know that if I go and look at a lot of kitty pictures, eventually they're going to send me more kitty pictures because they know I like kitties. All right, uh, and that's fine with me. You know, use use your algorithm rhythms to figure out what I. I'll tell you. You know who uses it? YouTube uses it like crazy. If right now I go in there and I look for, uh, oh, I don't know, Cary Grant, right, and then I will go down and will start showing me videos, and every other one will be about Cary Grant. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're using the same algorithms you're accusing the Chinese of using with TikTok. And yet the fact is, 
that the algorithms that uh, in America, they, they're, they're mining data all the time from you. If you use Facebook, you use YouTube, you use uh, who, you know, uh, what do you call it, Google, uh, they're mining, they're data mining constantly. So if China is doing the same thing with, uh, with, a, uh, with an app, what's so unusual about that? You don't question American companies doing it. No, it's a, well, privacy's dead, but I think is the data mining thing is just primarily to sell you shit, right? Yeah, well, that and to, to show you stuff you want to see. Okay. Hey, you know, I just look, we've run out of time here, Larry. Yes, we have. Oh, wow. We have, oh, a lot of fun. we have a lot of fun with these. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you doing them. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry my ringer was off. I know you tried to catch me earlier. Yeah, but. well, <laughs> uh, that's par for the course. But yes. uh, anyway, hey, I will see you again next week. We'll catch you next week. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Yay! Alex Bennett, man. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet. The Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, yes, yes. Larry Bubbles Brown, folks. We love Larry, and uh, we will continue to love Larry no matter what anybody says. Anyway, where are we? I'm just trying to get things. Uh, you know, I do everything here. I mean, I, I flip the switches, and I, I change the cameras, and the do the hand to him. So I, if every now and then I'm kind of looking off to the side of me doing something. Please don't mind that, okay? Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, it's uh, time now to go to our citizen panel, of which there are only two people right now. But we'll admit them. What the hell? Why not? Here they come. There they are. There's Jeff and there's Josh. Hello, Josh. How are you this evening? Good. Yep. And uh, Jeff, are you doing okay? Yep. Yep. Get, move, yeah, move your camera down. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, uh, I don't know where everybody is these days in the beginning of the show when we get to this point of the, in the show, but they are not here. Uh, man, I'm, I, you know, I'm really getting tired of something. Um, let me explain it to you a second. You know, I keep talking about, uh, joking about, YouTube demonetizing me, you know, because what we do is we monetize these programs. You see a little commercial at the beginning of it, and I get paid for that. I don't get paid a lot, you know. I mean, if I were to send you all money for that, uh, I would be sending you about a penny each, all right? But the thing is, they demonetize you if you don't meet up to the criterion of being good for their advertisers, all right? So what happens to me, it, it's really incredible, uh, and I don't know why, but the last couple of times they've demonetized me, it's amazing because it was for such benign stuff mm. that it was ridiculous. Like for instance, you know the shows I do with Marjorie on Facebook? Well, I, I also post them over on YouTube. Demonetized. I mean, can you tell me why? I have no yeah. idea. Do, do, they, do they not give you a reason? Oh, no, they don't give you a reason. So then you protest it, and then they go, Oh, mm. congratulations, we've just looked at it, and you're okay. Mm. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, God, I got to stop. I got to die. Boy, boy, boy. Oh, boy. You see what happened? Uh, that was uh, somebody got really smart. That they made that Alan W. Um, oh boy. Uh, uh, hmm? Mary. Yes. Joe. Right. Right. Remove. Mary All right. Here. Remove. Okay. Remove. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> this guy is like yelling at us here. Right? Oh, there we go. I you know I don't care. What the hell. I'm sorry about that, folks. Well, we will get demonetized well, now, have I to suppose. Ask why tonight? You know, you probably should not protest that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will not protest it at all. And they probably won't demonetize this one. 
Yeah, it'd probably be your highest rated show ever. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I mean, I could go in later and take it out. Maybe I won't post the show tonight. That's what I won't do. <laughs> I'm tired of posting these shows anyway. Nobody watches them. So, you know, what the hell? Uh, screw that. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> so. Hmm. I what that was all about, but yeah. No. Well, you know, I don't know why people want to do this. You know, I, it, it, it's yeah. such a waste of their time, my time. Now, I have to admit that they, they put up somebody's name here who normally calls the program. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, now if that person calls tonight, I'm probably not going to put them on. Uh, but let me, let me go back to the uh, Zoom here. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what they gain from that. Like, I... Is it just like something fun, or I, I don't know? Uh, they, they, I guess they seem to think that's funny. I guess. Know? I mean, I, I don't know what. It, yeah, yeah. And, and it's funny. always it's always gay porn. Do you ever notice that? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, why is it always gay porn? <laughs> why can't you just uh, uh, some normal porn, right? Yeah. So anyway, what happened to Jeff? I dropped off. I don't know. Oh boy. Yeah, it's been rather <laughs> slow the last couple of nights. I don't know why. But yeah, we're here. It's like Saturday. But anyway, so, so I get demonetized for like uh uh I, and also my Monday show. The Monday show, nothing goes on there that is even slightly off off kilter. And yet they demonetize that. And I'm getting really pissed at this. So I'm thinking of maybe only putting this thing out live on uh, on uh, on YouTube, uh, and not necessarily doing anything else to it. Uh, you know, if you want to watch the program, watch it when it happens. Okay. Otherwise, I'm I'm tired of this. I'm not putting it up on Facebook. I'm not going to put it anywhere there. The only thing I'm going to put up on Facebook is the Monday show, which I broadcast on Facebook. And um, let me see here. Uh, uh, and uh, the, uh, the things I do with Marjorie, which I put directly on Facebook. So anyway, those are my, my things. Boy, there is nobody calling tonight. This is, this is getting to a point where, except, of course, that guy should have left him on. He was, a, you know, was, yeah. yeah. Who got Okay, here we go. Jeff Stein. Let me keep my finger on the button here, just just in case. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jeff Stein. Is that Jeff? Yes, that's Jeff. Okay. Uh, you know, one time somebody was really smart though. They said they were somebody. Then when I went to them, they were there, but I was talking to them and they wouldn't say anything. And then they ran porn. So what they had done was record that person, then used him as the uh, as as the uh, way to get in. So, well, somebody used Jeff's name too one night. Yeah, yeah, that was true. Yeah, and uh, tonight they used uh, um, what's Alan. it, Alan, who mm -hmm. hasn't called for the last two nights. So you know, I I guess I, if he calls tonight, I'll have to like go to my face and then put him back on, but. Uh, Anyway, that's that's the way that goes. So, uh, anything any of you want to talk about? Is there? A, uh, let me see here. Uh, oh, well, it looks like uh, Justice Thomas is in trouble again. He is. Yeah, he's been selling property now. What's this? Wait a minute. <clears throat> he uh, he made a couple of property. Uh, sold some property to. Uh, I forgot who it was. Sold a couple pieces of property and didn't disclose it when he was supposed to. $130,000. Yeah. <clears throat> anything you're supposed to disclose anything over $1,000. Yeah. And uh, that's almost worse than what he did before. <laughs> well, what he did before was pretty terrible. Yeah. Well, this but, is supposed you to know, be it was like Phil, Phil said on the program one night. He said, well, you know, I mean, it wasn't, there wasn't anything against the law, what he did. And I said, yeah, but it was unethical. But I suppose that doesn't matter. No. You know? This was both unethical yeah. and against the law. 
Oh, okay. Well, there's, well, there's specific a specific uh, rule in there that says you have to report anything over a thousand dollars. This is 130 times over. No, am I mistaken? That the only way we can get rid of a, uh, a, a Supreme Court justice is by impeachment. Yeah, unless they resign or die. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, what do you think of the chances Clarence Thomas will resign? I don't think he will at all. Um, I don't know. I think he's getting better now. He's still bitter over the confirmation, you know, so I don't think he'll ever let that go. Um, but I don't think he'll resign, you know. Uh, you don't think so? Even I, I, I don't. I mean, Thomas is a pretty stubborn yeah, individual. Um I don't really think he's changed his mind on hardly anything in a very, very long time. So I, I don't, you know, foresee him as, as resigning. I mean, you know, never day. I mean, if it happened, you know, but uh, I, I don't think he'll, I don't think he'll do it. Um, and, you know, the chances of it are pretty small. Now, the impeachment, I don't know. Uh, I mean... I, I definitely think they need to take a look at 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 his stuff because the more days that go on, the more things seem to get unearthed, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we had this round of the stuff last week, and then a week goes by. So then now that people are looking even more closely, it's not taking them too long to find stuff. So this may not even be all that's out there. Um, or then again, it might be. And I'm not saying this is, is some kind of, uh, you know, Clarence Thomas hater or anything. Look, I've come on this program many times, mm -hmm. and I don't know if I'd say defended, but at least tried to explain, you know, some justices that people can't stand. And, and I've never been a big Clarence Thomas fan. I mean, some of the things that he has said I, I thought were in line with his judicial philosophy. I didn't really think that, you know— there was malice or anything and and why he said what he said and, you know and i don't necessarily think that he's out to be serving people you know like being bought with rulings and stuff like that i just don't think he's a, an, a real ethical individual you know i mean i i think yeah but you know I, that it's I, possible I, to, it's it's not like i don't think he's bought off and paid or any of this and you know, he just dismisses it. I think he wanted that job, and he likes it, and he took it seriously. But I don't think that he's an ethical person. You know, I think he thinks this stuff is okay because it's – he's always felt kind of like he was owed or entitled. He's always struck me that way. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I deserve this because I had a shit life, and – you ran me through the ringer over my confirmation. Well, you, you know saying? something? We have we have Joe Biden to thank for him. Yeah. You know? I mean, let's go back to Joe Biden then. You know, the way he allowed that committee to handle Anita Hill was horrible. It was despicable. That's the reason I never liked Joe Biden. What, I'm supposed to like him now as a liberal because of the way he acted in those hearings? was terrible yeah i mean democrats were not able to you know say what needed to be said at certain times because mm -hmm. they were chicken yeah <laughs> and and they still are a lot of times right you know um we'll see i mean you know it would be it would be nice if this stuff with thomas was like six or seven months from now and Democrats could, you know, have a chance at getting some kind of majority where they could handle this or whatever, but I, I don't know. It's going to be a tough road to go either way. I mean, you know, the, 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 the best thing would be, you know, for all parties would be if somehow the Chief Justice could find a way to strong arm him out of there, you know. I mean, by talking to him and cutting him out of whatever he could, you know, because I'm 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 sure they're friendly, but I'm sure the chief justice, the chief justice strikes me as an ethical individual, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we've talked about that before. Yeah. I mean, 
Justice Roberts does not strike me as a person. No, I can't accuse him of being unethical. He was a, you know, a, a piece of garbage, right? I mean, you know, I'm sure he's going to come out with rulings that some people don't like or in his opinion on certain things. But he strikes me as a person that works hard for the American public. And on certain days, you don't like the result of it, right? Just like a president or anybody else. But like he actually works like he takes it seriously like he understands what his job is responsibility you know and that he's ethical you know that he's not trying to make a, a billion dollars off of it or anything like that um and and if you don't really uh, and he keeps his mouth shut he keeps his head down you know what i'm saying he doesn't make weight he does what a judge should do right well no i Which think is, also he you know, he wants the court to be respected correct and he realizes that is not respect you get because you're owed it. It's respect mm -hmm. that you earn. Oh, yeah. here comes Alan W. again. Oh. Does he come on as Alan W.? I'm trying to I remember. I think so. Okay, well, wait a minute. Let me just put my... Uh, I'm sure he could message you and tell you if it was him put, or not. Put my right? camera on here. Watch this. Here, here we go. There we go. Okay. Let's see who we got here. Okay. Oh, he's taking a while. Okay. Oh, there he is. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And then there's Brian Neary. Let me just keep myself here. So just in case, you know. Okay. Um, is it Brian Neary? Um, Brian? There's Brian Neary. Let's see here. There, there he oh, is. Oh, this butthole. Cut him off. Cut uh, it off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, last, the, that, the last bomber on the on YouTube, you didn't see anything at all. What? You switched, to, you switched to you right away. Oh, really? You didn't see it? a lot of it? You'll watch the playback. You didn't see anything at all. It switched well, to you on the screen, and and you guys started talking about it, but nothing... Nothing no. we could just, we could just we could describe it for you. Yeah, we could do a description if you want to know. It was like a two uh, rear ends of a male of males. Uh, uh, oh, Tony. Uh, let's see here. Adrian out of the room first. Yeah. <laughs> no. Tony entered the room. Well, let's see here what happens with Tony. Let's just make sure it's Tony. So I will go back to my camera. Okay. Isn't it amazing you get to see this ugly visage? Um, yeah, but uh, anyway, there yeah, we it was go. Yeah, Harlan, Harlan Crow in Texas was it the same guy, isn't it? I think it's the same guy that he was. I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, there's Tony. Okay, the there's Tony. Okay. Conservative donor. Let me see here. Let's go back here. There's Tony. Hi, Tony. How you doing? How are you? Let's see here. Oh, here's uh, your eyes, they look what? Wait a minute. There's somebody who's trying to get on, but he's written, uh, Gabnet, your eyes look like testicles. Oh, yeah, I'm going to admit you. Fire. Blow me. Okay. Up today was Saturday. That's why. I... What? Did you watch in Chinatown? Yeah. I, I started watching Chinatown. And, and then, like, halfway through it, all of a sudden, and then, like, 30 minutes through it, all of a sudden, I, oh, shoot, it's, it's Friday, not Saturday. Oh, you're watching Chinatown? Yeah, I haven't seen that. I I haven't really seen the movie, so yeah, so it, it's good so far. Yeah, we watched what did we yeah. watch tonight. We rewatched a film we love called Jojo Rabbit. Has anybody seen Jojo Rabbit? I didn't even see that. Great that film. A... Great film. Really wonderful. Yeah. Done by Taka Waititi, uh, who also plays Hitler in this. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. That was a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Wayne tells me that somebody tried to get in using my name tonight before yeah. I got home. Why don't you turn your microphone down? You're yeah. overmodulating. Oh, God. Terribly. <laughs> Talk to my mother. <laughs> Sounds like yeah, he's... the uh, yeah. That's what Kevin was saying. It's, it's it's the same, you know, that GOP mega donor, you know, from the previous things, and I mean, it's it's fairly like we always say. I mean, can you imagine? If this was, you know, like, I mean, Elena Kagan and George Soros, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, can you imagine if Elena Kagan was spotted just eating dinner at a restaurant 
with George Soros. Right. I, I mean, I'm dead serious. If there were a picture of her and him eating dinner at the table in a restaurant in Washington, well, who picked who it picked would up be a big deal. the question would be who picked up the bill? Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, I'm dead serious though. If 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 they went out to dinner and well, just she could she one could hour go, and he paid for yeah. it, it would be a big deal. She could go out with George Soros, couldn't she, to have dinner? Not against the law that I'm aware of. They have of. the same political feelings, right? They have a lot yeah. to discuss at dinner. That's nice. Sure. But they would go bad shit. They really <laughs> would. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. It would probably be some sort of... It would probably be a segment on Tucker Carlson. You yeah. know, I mean... Yeah, yeah. And they would get know, very we, apoplectic have, about they'd it. They'd have a guest or something. You know, I mean, you know, I, I mean I'm being serious, you know. What do we not know? And I mean, just whatever. I mean, but I'm sure that it would be one segment on each of the shows on Fox. Yeah, now. yeah. But it's uh, okay. You know. for, it's okay for Clarence Thomas to go out and you know. Yeah, apparently to travel the world in eighty days or whatever they twenty did, you know? years of taking <laughs> plane flights and sailing on the guy's yacht. This is twenty right. years of this. Doesn't that amount to bribes? Well, well, no, he says that he never made a decision based on his relationship with this guy. Okay? That doesn't matter. There's the ethics of it. God forbid I should mention ethics here. Well, since yeah, when, I mean, look, since I mean, when shouldn't we expect ethics out of a Supreme you know, Court justice? I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, Phil's statement that no laws were broken, I would say is borderline, okay? It's still yet to be determined. Okay, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I could probably concede that borderline, but probably concede. But even if I did, I would say that it it doesn't matter. Laws don't have to be broken for impeachment, first of all, and second of all, you know, it doesn't matter because what happened happened, and and he he knows that it was not that it's it's improper, right? I mean, it's it's poor conduct. Yeah. Or someone like a well, judge. Well, and, how and about, people's... wait a minute, how about the fact that this guy gave, I believe, $500,000, $500,000, mm -hmm. yeah, to Clarence Thomas's wife mm -hmm. for her pack or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I mean, mean, you know, and I, I get people's arguments or whatever that, well, you know, there are people too, and they get to go on vacation just like we do, and all that. I don't understand that, but listen, <laughs> they, they take these jobs knowing what, right? Mm -hmm. Public mm -hmm. servants make sacrifice. You know, I mean, I'm I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I mean, the framers of that document made sacrifices. I mean, mm -hmm. much sacrifice, and took. I mean, they understood that they were giving up things. To do what they did, and and these folks go into this job understanding that. I mean, th look, they do have the right to write a book and give speeches, and make, and they all do that. They have ways that they can enrich themselves, and and, and live a great life. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry that if that guy really is your best friend, then that's fine. But you need to say, hey man, you're my best friend, but I'm on the Supreme Court, so we got to keep this low key. You guys are going to come over tonight and, you know, that fucking bitch wife of mine is going to bake lasagna or something. I mean, you know, we, we, we're we not going to go stay at the Four Seasons, you know, <laughs> right. we, for the weekend, every weekend. Yeah. Have we ever impeached a, uh, a, a SCOTUS uh, judge? I think it's been done once. Oh, okay. Really, really long time ago. And it seems like it was one of the guys... Uh, what is their name? Well, we've always, Ohio, we've always, I mean. we've always asked for a high level of honesty and decency, yeah, right. and and on the part of of our justices. This is the highest court in the land. It's not, it's not, it's not the Senate. It's not the Congress. It's not even even the White House. Although we should expect it of the White House. This is the highest court in the land, and there shouldn't be any problem with with trying to, you know. Deal. They know better. They, they know, know better. better.
They know better. They know better. And so did Clarence Thomas. <laughs> You well, know, if all these years he had been taking these trips and reported them, that's a different story. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. This, guy, this guy claims that he, he sold, they, they sold this property, he bought the property so that he could build a building on there for Clarence Thomas to, to build a museum for him to uh, demonstrate the world, uh, the, to the world what a great... Uh, to dedicate a building to his life and and show the world what a great yeah they, they want a little mini clarence thomas you know like library, library yeah. museum yeah. study center yeah, okay all of which good. is fine well wait a I minute, mean, do, wait a minute. Do, do, do supreme court justices well, do that? Done that in the first place when he bought it that yeah. maybe would have been a little different but why is he waiting you know 10 years or whatever i mean, I mean like i said all of which is, is that. if that's what they want is fine i mean there is no law against that. I mean, you can do whatever, but you disclose it. W when presidents do that, for example, they form a, a foundation and a five hundred one three C. They yeah, yeah. fill out fifty thousand pieces of paper. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, you don't just do it and then ten years later get caught and go, oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, no, I'm gonna build was, a Seven Eleven in his name. You no, know, right. I mean, it was for a good cause. I mean, hey, I broke the law, but it was for a good cause. It's never really been a, you know. A, I mean, I guess it's an affirmative defense or whatever, but those usually are not accepted, you know? So it's, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, like I said, at the very, very least, mm -hmm. the Senate has the right to look into it. I mean, that's their constitutional right and their constitutional prerogative. Mm -hmm. And at the very least, they need to, to, to do so and then tell the public what they find and go from there yeah and if they think that it is a huge issue um what there's an election coming up not too long from now they they should probably make an issue of it right mm -hmm. i, I mean the other party has politicized uh, appointments to that court for quite some time mm -hmm. democrats have just as much a right to as they did uh, how far thomas get caught this time or it get found out I don't really know. I, it, I mean, I, I think is some... the one who put this out. Yeah. They're kind yeah. of good at that, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't know how they got their information. I don't even know if they've said how they got their information yet. Uh, I, I don't I don't know if I. Well, you know, after 20 years, it's that? kind of hard to keep something like that secret. You know, yeah. somebody somewhere yeah. is going to go, hey, do you know what Clarence Thomas has been doing with this guy for the last uh, so yeah. many years? You know. Yeah, yeah. I don't let me, know if I've come across that or not, but I mean, they, you know, ProPublica is pretty good at that stuff. Yeah. So, I don't know where they where they got where they get it from though. Um, yeah. We might be able to figure that out or read through all these articles and find one, but well, I, you know. Yeah. Let me bring I something else up here. Is anybody like me feeling slightly sorry for this kid who leaked this information? Oh, I was reading that. Wow, yeah. He's putting it up in the video game. Sorry? He huh? did this sorry on for him? Own. What? Sorry he did this on his Well, own. I, I just feel that he, to begin with, okay, he could have never gotten that information if it wasn't out there to get. Okay? So what was the government doing? to hide this information and to make sure that people couldn't get uh, get, uh, get this information online easily. This Obviously. kid wasn't oh, like a higher up. up. This, is, this kid only had, they said, oh, well, he had, um, he had, what do you call it? He had uh, top secret clearance. Okay. Hey, I had top secret clearance. That's yeah. nothing. That's yeah. the lowest form of top, of top secret clearance you can get. The, uh, the next one up, which I almost had, was crypto top secret. Uh, you know, the fact that he had that, you get that just because you're you're somewhere where there are code machines and things like that. Like I was with Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, and in the middle of our floor there was this bunker, and inside was a lot of code equipment. And because we were on the same floor as that, we all had to be given top secret clearance. 
which, by the way, the government didn't wind up giving me till two days before I mustered out of the Navy. Mm -hmm. But that, again, was their fault. But, Obviously, the government screwed up here, yeah. allowing that to be out there. Yeah, and this kid probably just was trying to impress his friends on that uh, gaming Yeah, he's site. putting on the game boards, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, on Discord, I think. Uh, I actually run, I have a, I run my Dungeons and Dragons on Discord. I have my own channel, but it's private. Yeah, so. yeah. but the it's point is, yeah. the point mm -hmm. is, I mean, I kind of feel sorry for him because, hey, he was, he's 21 years old. He's probably yeah. a real dope. And didn't know that you know that this was going to get him in trouble. He figured he was just showing it to his friends. Well, look what I get. Look what I got. Look actually. what I got. You know, I'll but look, but look. it must have been pretty. It wasn't like he worked for a high level in the government, and he was dealing with this stuff, and then he leaked it. You know, he's no Snowden. He's no. Nah. Who was that other woman that uh, was she got in trouble for it? Um, I'm trying to remember her name now. He's so not he's the, definitely getting fired over this. So whoever whoever was supposed to watch this kid, you know, that some people. Well, are no, like, that what they're doing is they're blaming the wrong person. They're not blaming the people who made this stuff easily available for this kid to get it because he didn't have the kind of clearance where he could get this kind of stuff on his own. He didn't have access to it. So apparently, access to it was pretty easy. Now I put it up to you. What do you think? I think he's going to prison for the rest of his oh, life. No, no, he's not going to prison. For it's the rest better of his than life. shooting up a school. I mean, trying to impress. Well, friends. Yeah, yeah, it's not exactly shooting up a school. <laughs> yeah. Getting saying. a gun to just impress his friends, you know. So. Yeah, but I mean, no, he's not going. To, he, in fact, they they said he may not even get time. He's gonna get a raise. <laughs> but they show <laughs> up. They show up. Here's yeah. his kid. Did you see him? He's like, you know, he's, like, he's a kid, yeah, right? They show up with half the army. You've been thinking like yeah. a terrorist or something. You know, they show military, up with, he's a military personnel, and, and he could have weapons. So it, Well, he did have the weapons. The army didn't show up. The FBI SWAT team. He's in the middle of playing his Xbox, and they're breaking the door down. He, he did have weapons, by the way. Yeah, well, that's, that's why they sent <laughs> That's why they sent the FBI. No, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that's why they did it. I think they did it for show. I mean, they had like they had like eight, yeah, you would ten the military people there. You know, plus the FBI. You thought it was Waco all over again? Yeah, I mean, well, they, used, they used the FBI SWAT team to take him into custody. I mean, this, I wonder who made that decision, Alex? To go this in, kid, like, if they had phoned him up and said, "Look, you did this wrong. We want you to give yourself up." Uh, can you turn yourself into the local federal closest local federal agent? He probably would have, or not. Come on, this kid isn't like some big criminal, okay? No, you know, but they're using him know. as the scapegoat because the government made this stuff, the ability to compromise this stuff, very easy. Mm -hmm. Because a guy, kid with, you know, top secret clearance. Oh boy, a top secret clearance could never get access to that material unless it was out there to get access to. So, you know. And it wasn't like he sent it off to, you know, WikiLeaks or anything like that, like all the other people did. He just, uh, you know. It, it, oh, here comes, and I, this says Charlie Wallace. I think it's Charlie. Right? Oh, well, well I think it's like Charlie it. too, but I ain't taking any chances tonight. Okay, so now you'll see my ugly mug, and I bring in Charlie Wallace. Okay, let's see if this, in fact, is Charlie Wallace. Okay, there we go. There it is, Charlie Wallace. Okay, back to our program. Thank you, Charlie, for joining us this evening. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Did you hear what we were talking about, about this kid who, you know, gave out, you know, Oh, put out. No, I, I just saw the story this afternoon. Uh, yeah, well, I just said I felt sorry for him because yeah, this, it's the government. Look, it's the government's job to make this stuff unavailable to people like him. You know, yeah. it's, it's it, you know, and and he was just trying to impress his friends. That's all he was trying to do. 
Marjorie said, well, this site was like one of those uh, racist sites or whatever. And I went, no, it's a game site. That's a game site. I use that. It's Discord. a game yeah. site. Yeah. You can have private, I have private little room for my, my campaign. Tony's on the racist Dungeons and Dragons site. No, I'm on my own. Yeah. You heard my, my friends when they were Zooming, and I have my own channel. You heard Josh, yeah. Yeah. And, oh. uh, the guy Kirk called him from San Fran. Really? Yeah, I can bring him in. Oh, okay. You, it's not really. It's a, it's all. It's a hobby site. Yeah. I, I, my yeah. son plays Dungeons and Dragons. Oh really? My kids, are, my kids on it. You play Dungeons and Dragons? I'm I, I don't. My son does. Oh, your son does. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I spy on my kids on it. You oh. spy on your kids? I don't know. Kid, enjoy it. My kid is on it, and he, he. I'm telling you. He acts with his friends on it when they're playing games, so I, I get the alerts, and I sit there and listen to them chew each other up while they're playing games. Tony, I've had like yeah. 40 years to get into that. And then all you those... you got to get in the right campaign. And, and the one... No, the one time I decided I was going to try it, it was oh, so... Really? It, I found it so boring. I That was it for me. Well, you got to have... I'm a good game master. I'm telling you. Well, great. But, but, <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> you you heard the guys calling, call right, Josh? From Brian. Oh. Well, let's talk about coffee or something. Yeah, did, did you ever? Oh, did you ever play the? Yeah. Did you ever play The Last of Us? I didn't play that. Well, actually. then you're I, not a game person. I'm, I'm more Super Mario, to say the truth. Oh, you? Oh, then you're really not a game person. Oh, I love Super Mario. Though, what you are is a three-year-old child at a mall. Or so. Zelda's great. Are you kidding? I love it. What? Zelda's a great game, Alex. What's a great game? Uh, Legend of Zelda, the new one. Okay. That open world browser. Wow, wow. Well, what kind of what kind of machine do you have to play them on? Oh my! Uh, I got the Switch, the Nintendo Switch. Really? Yeah, I love. I have every Nintendo system. Don't forget about it. I've got the newest PlayStation. I didn't get the. That's that's too pricey for me. Well, they want like six hundred for it. Yeah, but they're good. It is. It looks good. I keep staring plus, at it. But plus, it plus, you can you, you can play. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the um, uh, 4K movies on. Oh, okay, so that's cool. Yeah, I have a so you can sell one magazine and get that money. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah, right. Game. right. You could sell, game you could sell one magazine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, I got a magazine that you could be interested in next week, Alex. When I called uh, on Ed Sanders, I bought it from a guy. Oh, okay. I, you know, just because I knew Ed Sanders doesn't mean I care about. Well, to, any, I know about the any culture, more really. about him than I already told you. I know you got me interested on it. Now that was it. I bought the magazine. The guy had it. So I got to read that. It's about the counterculture. In the oh, 60s. and how much did he sell the magazine for? I chewed him down. I bought ten lives. You from the what? 60s. What? I, what? Wait. I chewed, say I chewed that. him down. You chewed him chew, down. Chew. 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 Not chew. Chew. <laughs> did you, did, you didn't say chewed him down. No, I said chew. That's my. But you know idea. where? I, well, I don't know where that comes from, but I have an idea that it's because somebody didn't know somebody well, was saying Jew. But you know what I did? We were talking last night. You got me interested with the whole space thing and all. So this guy I bought comics from. He had the Life whole magazine. space thing. Remember you were talking about space with the moon landing and all that. No. So the guy had a whole bunch of Life magazines from the '60s. So he had one with the moon landing that ought to from '69. So I said, you know what? I bought ten and I got them for a price I wanted. I'm going to keep them. And I figured I wanted to read them because, you know, to see how, you know, there's a little snapshot in time. So I got the Ed Sanders. I got a, some on Vietnam, some good articles, like the life on the covers. Oh, we just lost 20 people. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. They were all Jews. Yeah. I said two. Yeah. 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 Well, like, listen, later on, one? when you got time, let's get together and go out and get some food. Let's get some Hinks. What's that? Hinks. Oh, I get it. Yeah. yeah, I love my. You know what? You really want to get the money? Yeah, I chewed him down. What does that mean? <laughs> well, I knocked it down. I bought a set of ten. Okay, all, all right, right, all right. How about saying I negotiated with him? I negotiated. Yeah, that's it. Well, meanwhile, back to other stuff here. Yes. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, uh, today the Supreme Court also uh, decided to <laughs> let uh, not put into effect the ban on that abortion pill what's going on with that? and they're going to then judge they, they they were asked for immediate relief on it and so they said okay hold off on doing it and then we'll make a judgment later josh how do you think that judgment will turn out knowing the court well i think that 
the stay they did was, you know, necessary because the two rulings that came out that what same day or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, were basically in conflict with one another, and that left that company, you know, the main distributor or any distributor of that, in a complete conundrum, right? Because they can't simultaneously enforce mm -hmm. or abide by both rulings. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. mean. So someone had to decide. Obviously, that's the Supreme Court. I think that their stay is fairly telling. Um, you know, I think that the logic that was used uh, by the circuit in Texas, I think some of the conservative justices will find a little bit uh, offensive. I don't think that they'll like the fact that some of it was almost seen as a blatant disregard, not just for precedent, but for, for, for law, you know, that, um, this, this, the statute in the time to, to handle something like this had passed long ago that, that the folks who brought it didn't really have standing to bring it. I mean, you know, stuff that tends to irritate, uh, conservative justices. So I kind of think that it's going to end up you know, probably getting overturned if I had to guess. But he, uh, he, I think he, it'll take a while to actually get a case. Wait a minute. What will get overturned? What will get overturned? What will get over? What will get overturned? The uh, well, FDA. I think the one from Texas that that. Oh, okay. That banned All right. The okay, because it, what they did is know. they overturned the FDA's decision years ago that this pill was okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So when you right. say overturn, it could you could. <laughs> be mentioning either way so. yeah and i think that um you know i think that congress has clearly uh legislatively given the power to do such things to the fda okay mm -hmm. yeah. so that's where it's like sort of the opposite of where you saw like the the vaccine mandate through like osha or whatever where like i said mm -hmm. you know OSHA was never legislatively mandated to take such an action, but in this particular, and, and that's why that didn't really go well for the, at the court, right? But this is sort of kind of on the opposite end of that. You know, I think that it's pretty obvious that the FDA does have the right to approve or not approve drugs. I mean, that's literally what they do. Congress is really, to my memory, never specifically passed a piece of legislation that said this pill is legal to take right right i mean they've never 535 people have never debated and then passed a law that said you know it is legal to take ibuprofen made by this company you know mm -hmm. i mean and then the president signed it and they had a big thing no they passed a law that said this agency is allowed to decide this they debated that right. the president signed it and now this agency so you it. think this is not going to go well for the anti-abortion people yeah I, I don't think it will i figured that the worst they could do the worst they could do if they wanted to be the real conservative assholes that they turned out to be recently uh, what with roe v wade is that they will come out with a decision that it's up to each individual state to decide yeah, but I see. I don't think they can because, you know, I think they get into like interstate commerce and 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 conflicts and things like that with who can distribute what where, and it would it would it would not allow a company to sell things across state lines. I mean, it would just. I mean, it, it's it's. I think it's too complicated for that, and mm -hmm. you know. And I think that that is a step further than the conservative justices, if that's what you want to call them, will consider the right that the government should have. Right. You know? I mean, if, if they're for less government interference, I think that route is is high government interference. And the least amount of government interference is just saying, well, what does the law say? The law says that this federal agency is allowed to make these decisions. This federal agency made that decision. They made it a long time ago. Mm-hmm. The time for challenge passed, and the people who brought it have really not much to do with it. So I think on a number of things that they typically care about, 
I don't think it meets their criteria. I, I mean, I think it's it's probably it's just abortion people, you know, mm-hmm. pushing the limit, trying to get a case up there and hoping they hit the jackpot again, right? I mean, yeah. you know, it, it's because they're like playing with free money, are they not? Yeah. I mean, they hit a jackpot at Las Vegas. And, and they said, you know, we got a hell of a lot. Let's just keep playing a little more, and you know, maybe we'll win again. I mean, I think that's kind of what they're. Well, doing. they could lose again, big time. You it's know. possible, yeah. right? By the way, yeah, I mean, it could, you know, not it could backfire. I mean, in the long run, you know. A, a Charlie is wearing a fresh T-shirt tonight, and I can tell because it doesn't look like it's been in the wash once. <laughs> and unless you just don't ever wash your T-shirts. Uh, let's see here. What does that say? Counting in binary is as easy as oh boy, oh one one oh one one oh. Okay, all right. He only wears them like an hour a day with us yeah, for I'm Monday right. show. Yeah, yeah. The rest of the time he wears polos, you know. But uh, baseball, <laughs> baseball. Yeah. Well, anyway. Regular white T-shirt like Tony. Yep. Yeah, you don't wear anything with that says anything on your T-shirts, right? Through the balloon. You, Tony. Oh, I do. I have superhero shirts. I just I should wear one on Monday. I mean, on Wednesday. I got a lot of different uh, character shirts. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Now you're gonna encourage me, so I'm gonna I'm breaking them out then. All my shirts say 1939 on them. Really? That's all I ever get. But they they're wearing out mm-hmm. now. They're you kind of get. Oh, you get it? Okay. Yeah. I used, I have a lot of like uh, uh, superhero shirts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I actually got pajama superheroes. You can't see it now. Yeah. Yeah. You well, don't want to see that, please. Yeah. You want to, I got three pairs of them on Amazon. <laughs> Once they go on sale, I scoop them up. Does anybody think DeSantis is going to run for president? Yeah. He got. It. I don't know. I mean. Phil's girlfriend went crazy. The other one, she's yelling at the beer commercial, beer Bud Light now, that Marjorie Taylor or something. Oh, yeah. What, she, she did a Bud like Light commercial? commercial? Well, because I think they're for, like, uh, they're gonna gay and lesbians or something like that, Charlie, and now all of a sudden, you know, it's like she's standing out against that. I, I don't know. I was going to say that Budweiser is definitely not a Republican country company. So she didn't. Or she didn't. Rock being the big boneheads. Oh, well, she's going I don't. To be I, Budweiser. I don't. And they're buying hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars worth of Bud Light, just to run it over with a truck. Or wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, tell me this story. I don't know what yeah, you're yeah. talking about. Oh, you could say it. <laughs> what, what happened? The Bud Light had a special beer thing made up, and they delivered it to this this trans guy girl, I guess, who, who who's been documenting her uh, transition mm-hmm. on TikTok for the last year. Okay. And to celebrate the anniversary of the first uh, podcast or whatever that they put up, they had her picture on Bud Light cans delivered to her. And Just delivered to her. They didn't put them out nationally. No, they're not in the grocery stores, but, but the right wing is so bent out of shape over it that they're buying up hundreds Hundreds and thousands of cans of Bud to shoot it, to run it over with a tank, to yeah. run it over with a truck. Hey, listen, yeah. listen, Bud Light doesn't give a crap they still they buy because they because they're buy buying cans those cans, them. you know. Yeah. You don't even have to drink them. Huh? Right. No. Wow. So it, this goes this goes way back to the 1970s when Coors <laughs> boycotted. Uh, gay LGBT people and stuff like that, and Bud was the the preferred drink, and they supported. They no, supported if I gay. remember that story correctly, yeah. they said that Coors was anti LGBTQ yeah. yeah. whatever. Yes, that's what I said. When it wasn't true, mm. it well, wasn't. They, it, I remember the story. It was on sixty minutes. And they ran the story, and they said, uh, we're doing the story to set the record straight. And they went to Coors, and they went to various people, and showed that the whole story was a lie, that Coors, in fact, had employed lots of gay people. Mm-hmm. Lots of gay people. 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I had a friend of mine that owned, uh, was part owner in a gay bar in San Francisco in the 70s and 80s. And he said none of the gay bars throughout the country are allowing. And, and, and that yeah. was that was because of a lie okay. that was started about Coors. Now, it's okay. not that Coors isn't a right wing company. It's owned by right wing people. But yep. they are, were always very good at hiring people of any gender and not questioning yep. that yeah. or getting rid of them because they happen to be gay. What okay. they were doing was saying that Coors was doing quite the opposite, which wasn't true. So at the gay pride parades, you never see Coors advertised. See well, Budweiser. I mean, they're being stupid because Budweiser because it was proven it. beyond a shadow of a doubt that there was no no truth to that story. Okay, okay. You know, yeah. Do you have your hand up, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, I I think Coors was always a originally a West Coast beer. Actually, they're from Colorado. I think you're right, Colorado. Yeah, that's West but Coast. I know a lot no, of people not. wanted. To to have cores when it was not available. I mean, mm -hmm. today you can get it anywhere. Yeah. But uh, I, a lot of guys I know used to get on airplanes for business, okay? Yeah. On small airplanes and they would go to this factory and whatever and uh, spend like uh, one day. Well, all of a sudden, they, where I work, these guys started taking cores on the airplane, except they didn't tell the pilot that. Uh -huh. And they got pissed off because they were pr putting enough beer that they were affecting the weight. Oh my. <laughs> of the plane. Wow. Of the yeah. plane. How much? Yeah, must yeah. have been a small plane. Small yeah. plane, lots of cores. <laughs> Everybody was very happy about it, except for the pilot and the co pilot. Who actually said to you guys, officially no beer allowed on the airplane? Okay, well, speaking of companies which have been literally ruined by innuendo, uh, the Dominion suit goes to trial next week. Yeah. They're it, suing for a lot more than they're worth, aren't they? $1.6 billion? I think they're worth a lot of money. They're probably uh, worth more, but that's a big chunk. I mean, if they're, yeah. if they're asking for $1.6 billion, it's because they feel that's business lost. I, I could live comfortable on half of that. Well, we know you could live hum <laughs> comfortable on almost nothing. But anyway, um, um, it is, um, it's going to be an interesting suit because I don't think Fox is going to win this one. No, I don't either. I don't either. Uh, 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 Josh, did you hear about earlier in the week that they were... They uh, they said to the judge that they were you know they were going to use the defense that they were they had the right to report the news, and the mm. judge said don't use that because I'm going to turn it down if you bring it up because you had the ability to have on people who disagreed yeah. that Dominion machines were at fault and were fixing the election but you never had them on and because of that you can't use that argument. You, that mm. you were trying to be, uh, you know, bastions of uh, of, of uh, editorial content, as it were. What what do you think about that, Josh? Would you agree? Yeah, they don't they don't really have any argument that they can make that's going to work because they were caught. I mean, <laughs> this could <laughs> they if... were caught robbing a bank on camera with a hundred yeah. people. And the police right there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're just, you could have your trial and you could say, that ain't me. That's a dude that looks like me, but that ain't me. You can, we'll waste four or five days of you doing that. And when it's all over with, you can go to prison. You know, I mean, that's what you I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's well, what they're saying is, you know, that, that's not us. I mean, that's some people that sound like us, but <laughs> we would never say that. We're a news organization, we are fair and balanced. Yeah, no, but we are a news organization. Oh, that ain't me on the take. That's a guy that sounds like me. We yeah. have we have a right to report the news. Yes, but when you're bringing people on, like Rudy Giuliani, and uh, everybody else who was making the case that you know Dominion was fraudulent, and then you're not bringing on people on the other side. 
then you're not in you're not you're not uh, 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 investing your time and, and, in journalism. And, and you can present one-sided news and opinion, but not at the detriment of another or the defamation of a of an individual exactly. or a company. It's ex exactly. I mean, you can you can just you can say we decide that a cat stuck in a tree is not news, but a a dog chasing a car is. I mean, that that's fine. Well, you if know, they if they get popped, not, not it, it, ruins yeah. someone's reputation. If they get popped for one point, what is it? Six million? What are they? Billion? Um, one point two billion. If they get popped for that, it's over for them. They got to close up shop. Not yeah. I, I mean, right. I mean, you can't. You know. I mean, you can't go on television and say mm -hmm. that we're going to report tonight that you know. Uh, so and so is a is a, a sex offender, child molester, and all this stuff. And then his work sees it, and he gets fired, and his wife divorces him, and all this. And then it turns out it's not true. Oh, but not only is it not true, but there are emails and and audio tapes with everyone sitting around saying, "I know we're about to go on the air and say this, but it's not true," and we know it, but we don't care to be fine. I mean. Well, you also have all these letters you know. and so on, these texts from the people yeah. on the air saying, I don't believe Trump, Trump's, right. you know, I don't believe this person, I don't believe that person. And then they go on the air and do this whole anti-Dominion so, thing. Every, every single right or freedom in this country comes with limitation and responsibility attached, right? Right. I mean... Your rights can be taken away. You, you can, we can put you in prison, right? You, you know, you no longer have the right to do A, B, and C because you did this. I mean, rights come with limitations and responsibility. And they were well over the limitation of freedom of the press and freedom of speech. And they were well outside of fulfilling their responsibility. And what's even worse, what's even worse is they got them. They got, uh, got, got, they have the proof that they were worried about their bottom line, yep. that their advertisers, their uh, their ratings would hurt. Thereby, the ratings determine how much people pay for advertising. Mm -hmm. you, you can always get low ratings, but then you have to lower the money you charge people for yeah. advertising. And I don't care. This is how it works. Look, if six months from now there's some bombshell proof that MSNBC has been saying flat out lies about Trump's tax returns and they got emails and audio tapes of everyone going on air saying we're making this up we know it's a lie then you know what book them Dano I don't I mean you know yeah exactly <laughs> they exactly. sue them too yeah. I, mean, yeah. you know? uh, I mean it's, but it's, it's yeah yeah they're they're not I don't know I mean I hope they really do have a trial I mean <laughs> It's, I mean, well, it's supposed sweet, to go right? on starting next week, and you got yeah. uh, Mur Murdoch is supposed to testify, and all the oh. people who are on Fox are supposed to testify, and uh, it right. looks like it's going to be a funny thing. Is, is, you know, you go to that channel right now, and they're doing it again. They continue to do it. They still do it. I mean, yeah, and I bet, I bet when they go to trial next week, it's not reported <laughs> on Fox. <laughs> right. You know, and let's face it, it's newsworthy Fox, but. <laughs> you know, oh, well. anyway. I mean, not, 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 you know, showing up in court in your $40,000 suit and acting like a smug prick is going to go a long way toward not costing you a lot of money. Let me know how that works out for you. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, because that's exactly what they're going to do. Yeah. So, hey, listen, we got the theme playing here, and that brings to a close yet another fine week of broadcasting here. Well, actually, we still got Jack coming up next. Uh, but uh, uh, we bring this program to a fond conclusion for the week. Eh. Anyway, uh, I don't know if I'm going to post this show. I haven't figured that out yet. i got to go Let's see if, what happened here. Uh, but anyway, but uh, hey, thank you very much, Josh. Appreciate you and your legal opinions. Also, thanks to Kevin. Thanks to uh, Jeff. Love having you here. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Alan, thank you so much for coming on here. Uh, and, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Brian, 
We love having you here. Was that uh, was that Adrian in the background we saw earlier? Yeah, oh, there she's she is. Around. She's she's hanging out of, on the floor by the door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, she got she has dance rehearsal tomorrow. She got to get to bed. Oh, okay. Hi, Hi, Adrian. Yeah, I have dance rehearsal too. Isn't that amazing? Uh, uh, Tony, thank you and thank you very much, Charlie. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, okay? And I'll give you a big wave goodbye as well. Thank you, everybody. We really appreciate it. Jack Bishop is next over most of this same uh, gap net. He'll be doing a little program called The Intersection, and you can call him on Skype at GabNet Live. In the meantime, I'll see you again on Monday with the pop-up show, and then again next Wednesday right here, same station, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, everybody, have a nice night, and if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>